Welcome to Constructive Conversations, Building Canada Stories. I'm your host, George Affleck. Thanks for joining me as we dig into the foundations of Canada's construction industry, learning from leaders and pioneers in the business. Today, I'm joined by William Donnellan of IRL Construction in Vancouver, British Columbia. William and his wife launched IRL after arriving in Canada from Ireland, and they've now grown that business into a company that takes pride in hiring other new Canadians, supports local charitable organizations, and they've even branched out into the hospitality industry. They recently won the Independent Contractors and Business Association's Gord Stewart Workplace Health and Safety Innovation Award for their intelligent illumination safety system. Let's start the conversation now. William, thanks so much for uh, for joining me today on Constructive Conversations. I, I want to you know, find out first uh, about IRL construction. Uh, and so why don't you, you know, start there? Tell us about, you know, what you do and, and why you do it. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me on here today. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, so IRL Construction was founded by myself in 2011. Uh, so we just had our 10th anniversary. Uh, and we're very proud of that. Um, I guess the reason for setting up IRL was uh, I was a superintendent at the time uh, for a concrete company here in Vancouver, uh, and or just just prior to setting up, I guess. And um, there was a huge uh, problem with labor in in uh, Vancouver in particular. I I I thought, uh, for example, um, we used to use a lot of temporary labor services per, or providers. Um, We'd get carpenters in particular because we were doing a lot of concrete form work. And uh, the owner of the company at the time would say to me, you know, okay, we've got to make a deadline for the end of the week. We're going to have a big concrete pour. Let's get that slab done. And and I'd be saying, well, we don't really have enough guys. He'd say, okay, call this number um, and get some more help. So uh, I'd call up the number. I'd get a couple of carpenters. um, And this would happen like every week and uh, or on a regular basis anyway. And... um, the the guys or girls that would come there was always uh there was always uh, issues you know they mightn't have a pouch or they wouldn't have their ppe or they would be late so i just thought you know wouldn't it be great if i could call up somebody and uh they came on time they had all of their tools they had all of their ppe and they they knew what they were doing you know um so that's exactly uh what i done uh, we set up IRL construction and um we done a lot of screening before we hired anybody we uh, actually have toolkits that we would give to anybody that comes and doesn't have like a pouch or the hammer or their basic tools um the last thing we want is somebody arriving at site with no tools Uh, and then we went a couple of steps further i guess down the line after a year or two once we we got uh some funds together we, we started providing vehicles for all of our skilled carpenters as well um so now you call up uh, IRL construction and you ask them can I get two carpenters uh, for a couple of days to to help with a push to get a pour done and uh, they rock up on time uh, they have a company vehicle uh, all of their tools are uh, uh, prof- I guess the professional and all their tools are uh, quality you know top quality like we we uh, want to Hilti's biggest clients here in Vancouver so we've got all the Hilti tools and uh, the guys are uh, they got fall pro uh, fit testing um, Wemis you know uh, and kind of covered all all bases so that's that's uh i guess the short story really puts you know the full into full service i mean uh, providing all those things for for the guys and then and the companies you work with must make life so much easier so what kind of projects i mean uh, do you work on are these from big to small or are these small projects are you working on big projects or is it a real mixture um at the moment i'd say we have about 15 projects on the go and uh i must say at IRL construction there's three departments so we got safety training we do a lot of a lot of safety training for our clients in particular uh scissor lifts aerial boom lifts um telehandler forklift that kind of thing uh fall protection um so we do a lot of safety training that's uh, department one uh, then we have a special projects department where we do uh, i guess uh, a lot of contracting um anything from five thousand dollars to five million dollars uh and that's probably about 50% of our revenue, I'd say. And then uh, we have a skilled labor hire department uh, where we do exactly uh, what I just mentioned. Um, and, and when we started, we just done the, the skilled labor hire. And then eventually we started contracting uh, 
after a few years and um, set up our special projects department. So you you know that when you say fifty percent, I mean is that that's the bread and butter then? If that one just that one section, um, is that what you're getting known for, or do you or are you still known for because you have that integrated approach? Uh, what are you getting known for most of all? Um, I'll say I'll say both. Um, we, for example, uh, a good client there, Wes McClellan, called us uh, yesterday and they asked for uh, you know can I get a couple of carpenters on TNM and will you also price this uh, framing project in Delta for us? So. Uh, people know that we do both now and um, they will utilize uh, both services depending on their needs. So, uh, yeah, it's about 50-50. Okay. So tell me about your ideal client. I mean, you've, you, because you have such a diverse offering, uh, you know, what is your dream client? When, when, when you get that call, you're like, all right, I got, I got one. This is my best kind of client. Yeah. We're, we're very lucky. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer that uh, the two most important things in business are trust and relationships uh, and 90% of our work is from repeat business uh, companies that we've worked with for a decade uh, Larry Fisher from Lark for example uh, Jacob Brothers uh, I used to work for Jacob Brothers uh, about 12 okay. or 14 years ago um, so Jacob Brothers worked for them for a long time uh, Omicron uh, Elephant Griffin uh, some of the new players or new developers in town um, any, any of the larger GCs in the city, uh, Ani, we do a lot of work for Ani, uh, tenant improvements, building envelope stuff. Um, and there's not too many, to be honest, George, that we haven't worked with uh, here in Vancouver. So any of the large GCs, we, we did do some re uh, residential stuff in the beginning, but we're so busy with the commercial now, it's, it's very hard for us to do the residential. But we, we have a custom home on the go every now and again. We're doing one at the moment for Kindred Construction out in, uh, in Richmond, a uh, 5,000 square foot home. Uh, we're framing that for them. So we do do a bit of residential, but mainly commercial now and industrial. So word of mouth, I mean, when you look at marketing, uh, it's really relying on word of mouth. You're not out there advertising, you're not out there. It's really just you get those big clients and they just keep coming back because they know they can trust you. Yes, exactly. Uh, at the end of the day it's it's all about keeping your clients happy you know <laughs> yes. uh, and and you know it sounds a bit uh cliche but it, just doing the simple things right you know uh it's a great start when somebody shows up on time and i mean like w most of our sites start at 7 7 a.m so all of our workers know that they're there at 6 30 or 6 45 at the latest uh and i always say to them uh we meet up quarterly and have, an, have appreciation events um all of our our different teams and I would say, you know, uh, if you're starting at seven and you're showing up at five to seven, you're late because you're showing up, you got a coffee in your hand, you got to put on your PPE and, you know, it doesn't look good. And uh, we're big believers in being on time, uh, doing the simple things right and everything else will fall into place after that. And of course, sometimes you have your, your hiccups, but that's construction. That's course, life. Of course. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's, but you deal with all those things for the, for your clients, which probably takes a lot of the headache off them. And what's that saying? Uh, you know, early is, uh, on time and on time is late, I think is what they say. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Um, you tell you touch on the top of this, but you know, but how has your company evolved over the years, Jen? And how do you see, you know, how do you see that evolving further? Um, and, and, you know, especially in a market that's so busy like Vancouver. Um, yeah, it, it blows my mind. Actually, about two years ago, somebody said to me, William, do you ever stop and look back and, and see what you have done, you know, in the last uh, seven, eight years? And I actually said, uh, no, I don't. So I, I went on to our social media pages and uh, I looked back, you know, five years. And uh, I was talking to a girl that was working for us at the time, our, our office manager, Martha Brackett, and uh, she's back in Ireland now. Unfortunately, she had to go back and she worked with us for six or seven years. And I was having a conversation with her and Martha says, William, three years ago, we were working out of, uh, and this was a few years ago, we were having this conversation, but she goes, three years ago, we were, do you remember that I used to come in the morning to your house, I'd knock on the door, yourself and Laura would let me in, and uh, I would work out of one of your bedrooms. So uh, when I look at where we are now, we got uh, uh, multiple offices here in, in South Falls Creek, and we got an unbelievable team, you know, we got in-house uh, bookkeepers, the CFO, uh, assistants, um, HR managers, uh, marketing managers. Um, it's incredible. And I think it's very important that people do stop and look back and, and kind of give themselves a clap on the back and say, you know, well done, because business is tough. Business is very tough. And uh, we don't stop. Sometimes we're so busy, we don't stop and look back and say, you know, 
let's celebrate uh, our achievements. I think it's where very important. You, where you've gotten to, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I want to kind of get into the industry in general uh, now, really focusing on how, um, you know, because you've, you've been in the industry now for several years. And you know, what are, you know, the biggest changes that you've seen uh, over that time since you started and now uh, that uh, really jumps out at you? Um, the biggest changes. Um, I think uh, labor is, is, uh, is a constant concern. Uh, for sure, you know, and, and anybody I talk to, I go to a lot of networking events. We host a lot of net- networking events at our, our pubs and restaurants. And uh, anyone I ever ask the question to, whether it be Todd Jacob or, uh, um, you know, Kevin Liu, uh, any of these owners of these, uh, uh, general, the general contractors, these companies, they're all saying labor is their biggest, biggest problem, you know. So um, over the years, I've seen it, it's getting tougher and tougher to get labor. Uh, for example, about three, four years ago, we had probably 150 full-time staff in our construction department. Now we have 50 because we believe in quality. You know, it's not just a numbers game for us. We have to have the quality. Uh, we have to have control, you know, um, and if we don't, we won't get the results, you know. So, like, I think labor is number one, George. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's. It's a it's a big problem, and uh, I can only see it getting getting worse. To be honest, I, you know that's constant. And the conversations I have on this uh, show is that is across the country uh, the biggest challenge for sure. Diversity as well. We hear a lot about that uh, on the on the on the show. Um, but for you, then you're you know with that challenge, uh, and you have competition. Maybe not specifically the way you do it, but you know people all over are all fighting for the labor. So how do you, you know? What is the philosophy of IRL that really makes people like, oh, I want to work for for you, for IRL, as opposed to blank company? What is it that, that you can provide that really makes people go, hmm, yeah. And also, from your point of view, how do you find great people to make sure that they're a right fit for your philosophy? Yeah, um, I think uh, attraction rather than promotion. I really believe that. Um, you know, uh, you, you, you have to lead by example. And you need to people want have to want to work with you and hiring the right people you know we are so lucky uh, across all of our companies we have we have such a great team our people are by far uh, our biggest strength um they're loyal you know i know a lot of people i talked to as well they'll say uh, some of our biggest challenges are retaining employees we're very lucky that uh, not too many people leave us and go and work for other companies uh because I guess we're an Irish-owned and operated company, uh, a lot of our workers do come from Ireland, but we have workers from about, I don't know, 10 or 12 different countries working for us right now. And uh, so a very diverse group, but um, I see when, when they leave, typically they'll go back to Ireland or the UK or Australia. Um, so that's uh, reassuring for us. Uh, we're doing something right. And I think, uh, I guess by having uh, appreciation events and stuff like that and and, and and showing those people that you appreciate them, uh, it really goes a long way. And um, just being there to support them. You know, we have an executive committee um, for each of our companies, and that committee is uh, formed up of five people, and they're just a support network. They're just leaders that uh, if anybody has any personal or, or business uh, issues, they can approach any of those people, whoever they feel comfortable with, and, 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 and you know, iron them out. A good structure for that, for sure, helps. Um, on, on a macro level, though, when you talk about you've got you you working, you have a lot of Irish people working for you, another and twelve other uh, people. You know, we had obviously the last couple of years have been crazy, um, but as we head to uh, back to more normal immigration policies, where we can have people coming in, is that the challenge? Is you know we got to make sure we have an influx of people to get those jobs to, or you know, what can government be doing to make your life and, and other people in the industries better, especially when, when you're talking about labor shortages? Yeah, good question. Um, I came here in 2009. I'm a carpenter myself. And uh, my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, Laura, she had a degree in business and HR at the time. And imagine she came on my back because it, it, it's based on a point system. And uh, because there's such a large demand for trades here and carpenters in particular, um, we, we got in on a, a temporary work permit, uh, through myself. Um, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from a, fa- a large family. There's uh, t- my mom had 10 kids. I'm the only one that didn't go to university. So, uh, it, it's, it's funny that I, uh, that Laura, I guess with all of her degrees was able to 
come in because she was going with me, you know, and I often, rem- I often remind her that. Um, but at the time, um, it was a one year work permit. And uh, that was tough because you know how long it takes uh, for, it's, it's a very lengthy uh, process to get all the paperwork done and to, uh, you know, put in your application, uh, your immigration application to, to stay on after that. And you need to be doing that at probably, I'd say at about six months, you know, if you've got a one year permit, you want to be thinking about doing that uh, no later than six months into that one year permit. So you got to work with a company. Number one, you got to figure out, do I love it here? Uh, and thankfully we did. Uh, we came for like three or six months and here we are 14 years later. So uh, we fell in love with the place. Uh, we had no context, didn't know anybody when we came here. Um, but we, we wanted to stay, number one. Uh, and then number two, you got to find an employer that's willing to, to back you, you know, yeah. that's willing to sign the dotted line and say, okay, I'm going to give this guy uh, a full-time job and I'm going to keep him for a couple more years. And sometimes that's, that's a hard thing to do, especially in your first year. But now uh, I must say the Canadian Immigration Services have made that easier and you can get a two-year work permit right off the bat. Uh, right. They've done that for uh, anybody coming in from Ireland. Um, as, uh, I'm not sure if they've done it for many other countries, but uh, they've definitely done it for the Irish, and think, that's it. That's a huge a few, help. Yeah. yeah, that's a huge help. Yeah, because you think about that process of just getting here and then connecting and networking, and then of course the employer wants to, you know, be able, they they want to if they want to keep you, they got to do the paperwork, they got to do all that stuff, and it takes time and and costs, and uh, so a, a two year commitment because that gives you a chance as an employer to also see how good they are at what they do. It usually takes. I think, you know, a while for an employee to kind of get to a point where you go, okay, you get what we do now, especially if you're training and, and getting some people as, as your business does, you know, junior people that you can work up and grow uh, their skill set and get them, you know, uh, to grow with the company, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a big commitment from both yeah. sides, you know? Totally. The, you know, you've done a lot of projects over the, the several years and, and I know it's hard to always do, uh, maybe answer this question, but there are projects that, that you're most proud of that you go... I worked on that, and you know, you could show your kids and go, "See that? We we helped build that." Is there a, you know one or two projects you go, "Yeah, I'm so proud of that." Um, there's many. Uh, we've done hundreds and hundreds of projects, uh, and uh, we've some some great success stories. But I guess the first ones that come to mind are, are the ones that are closer to home. Uh, the Seaforth Armory on Berardon first. Um, I was on that job myself personally for. Uh, over two years anyway, we were there. Uh, we had a large crew there for about three years. Um, and that that job was was uh, very good to us. We took on a lot of, uh, get, I'll say, by other contracts, and we provided a lot of skilled labor uh, just to tie up some loose ends, uh, you know, op- equipment operators, stuff like that, uh, general side conditions. And um, that, that was a, a great project. Um, we learned a lot there. It was a huge seismic upgrade plus a new build. Uh, yeah. There was a lot of concrete work, uh, parkades, um, and and just because I guess it's like uh, a kilometer down the road, uh, that one means a lot to us. Um, yes. We done a project in uh, the Yukon up in Dawson City in 2012 oh, yeah. for uh, Corex Utilities, um, and that was a wastewater treatment plant, and that was a, a real experience as well. Um, I went up there myself uh, as the site foreman. I had a crew of about 15. I spent about a year up there, and uh, that was that was just something incredible. Um, I loved it, loved every minute of it. Uh, we were working 12, 15 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, I think I'd done one uh, turnaround in the first month and maybe uh, a handful uh, in the next 12 months, and, and, and that was it. So I spent a lot of time up there. Um, my, it's, my, it's a small town too. It is a small there, town, about yeah. 800 people, I think. Yeah. Um, so like, uh, and when I went up there uh, at the start of the year, it was like 24 hours of darkness. I have never seen anything yeah. like that before. Uh, and then in the summertime, it's like 24 hours of daylight. So it was a, a real experience. I uh, really enjoyed it. I drove up there with uh, my That's cargo trailer and all of our tools. Yeah, it took me yeah. 26 hours. Uh, <laughs> So way up past Whitehorse and about six hours past that up to, to Dawson City. So that was that was incredible. Um, 
and dealing with those temperatures. It was minus minus fifty six below with the wind chill when I arrived up there. <laughs> That's so, a whole other ball game. Yeah. So did you uh, did you ki- did you kiss the toe? Is it kiss the toe? I uh, did. I did. You did. Our toe. You go to a pub yeah. and, and drink this drink, right? So it's in a bottle, and then That's it's right. an actual gold, gold miner's toe or something. That's right. Somebody that lost their toe through I think it was frostbite, and yeah, they they saved the toe and put it into a bottle of whiskey, and you do your shot. Uh, you have to, yeah, you have to make sure that the toe, they take the toe out and uh, you've got to make sure that the toe touches your lips or else it's not legit. Kiss the toe, but, right. Uh, yeah, uh, that was... <laughs> I don't know that about was, that. There was a couple of, a couple of uh, toes swallowed uh, down through the years, I believe, so it's not the original one, <laughs> but there's still a toe there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, and speaking of pubs, because that's, that's that's the other thing that's, you know I can't let you go without asking you about this other whole other business dream, which is kind of unrelated, but you you brought it up a couple times, uh, but I don't think people understood the reference because you actually own pubs and you run pubs. Uh, uh, IRL Group has a couple of pubs that are quite well known in the city, and you know how how does that how do those two connect, and how do you actually juggle that? Because it it seems like it would be a completely different model and staffing challenges and everything. It is, it is. Um, but you know what? Business is business at the end of the day. You look at look at Jimmy Patterson. How many businesses is he? Like 155 different businesses or something like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, like as I said, trust and relationships and having the right people around you um, and leading by example. Uh, but yes, we do have some pubs. We opened uh, five locations in four years. Uh, we ha- kept on to three. So we have uh, Donlan's Irish Bar on Granville. We have Shamrock Bar and Grill down in the West End. And we have... Smiths of Gastown in uh, Gastown, uh, next door, next right next to the Blarney Stone. There it was formerly the Irish Heather. It's been there for a long time. Right. So, I guess the backstory is uh, my mum's side of the family uh, from Dublin. They were all into the hospitality, and and my grandparents and my uncle had pubs in Dublin City. Uh, this is the third Smiths actually in three generations. Uh, the one in, in Gastown, uh, which we just uh, bought and opened last year, um, and then. On my dad's side of the family, uh, my dad and my uncles were into the construction, and and uh, I done an apprenticeship when I was seventeen years of age, and uh, worked my way up, and uh, I got into the construction. I had a pub in Ireland when I was about uh, nineteen or twenty. I took on a five year lease on a pub. I think I was nineteen, and then I left when I was about twenty five and came to Canada when that five year lease was up in the pub. I promised I'd never do that again. I said no more pubs ever. Uh, and then uh, in uh, yeah in in 2016, uh, seen a location for rent uh, on Granville Street. It used to be the formerly uh, the Stone Temple, and uh, so people will know that. I think it's pretty famous uh, from what I hear from the locals. And uh, ended up signing a lease and spent about 18 months renovating that. And we opened Donlan's Irish Pub in, in 2017, and just exploded. 2017, 18, 19 were uh, phenomenal, and uh, we had lots of fun. I really enjoyed um, uh, giving back to the community and supporting uh, sports teams and organizations and, you know, not for profits and having events there. And uh, I just love people. I love networking. Uh, as I said, I'm from a large family. I, I, I love uh, sitting down and talking to interesting people uh, and good people. And um, I just I just enjoyed it. And then uh, we opened up another one and another one and another one and another one. And, and uh, one turns into to four or five and then uh, the pandemic came so we had to yeah. scale back a little bit and and uh be be a bit conservative yes well so much for your commitment to not ever open a pub again and you did but uh i know as a vancouverite and a downtown uh, person who lives downtown i appreciate the, the pubs that you have and have been to them so uh thank you very much for that and thanks very much for for joining me today William. you're very welcome thanks. thank you I'm George Affleck. Thanks for joining me at Constructive Conversations, Building Canada Stories, where we dig into the foundations of Canada's construction industry, learning from leaders, pioneers in the business.